Okay, hi. Uh, just now we have some technical problems and now we are waiting for our brother Elmas to join again our live session. And today's slot is leadership chat. We are going to talk about leadership issues in uh, among the children. So now I'm waiting for Elmas to join again uh, our live session. And uh, thank you MPKK Putrajaya and Blood Mary. Thank you for joining. But now I'm waiting for Elmas to join me again. And no Shamira, thank you for joining again. And PKK Sabah, thank you for joining. And Zachary, oh, okay, Elmas have joined. So wait, I'm inviting him in. Hi, Abang M. Hi, MPKK Malaysia, thank you. Alhamdulillah, finally. Yeah, finally. He's stable again. Yeah. So Elmas, how are you? Okay, I'm okay. I'm fine. Okay. Okay, jalah di rumah aja. Di rumah aja. Bosan lah sedikit. Uh, buat apa je di rumah? Ah, uh, the normal things that students do. We study, do a bit of exercise, go on social media, and that's the same thing every day. The same session every day. It's, it gets boring. It does. Okay, mm -hmm. okay guys. Ah, uh, now we have our president here. Our children representative council Malaysia president. Mr. Elmas, and now uh, we are proud to have him here with to, uh, together with us. So, uh, Elmas, can you please introduce yourself first to our viewers today? Uh, hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Elmas. I'm 17 years old. I'm, I, I, I'm taking SPM this year, Form 5. So that's fun. Uh, also, I'm the president of the National Council uh, for MPKK, Majid Puakilan Kanak-Kanak. That's what it stands for, or in English, National Child Representative Council. So, hi. Okay, thank you, Elmas, for your introduction. And for your information, I am the alumni of MPKK in 2013 and 2014. Uh, before this, I was the president for Penang MPKK. So, Elmas, um, can yeah. you explain yeah. to us what is really, what is... Uh, what is MPKK is really about? What okay. is MPKK? Because uh, not everyone knows what is MPKK. So can you okay. explain to us? Yeah. MPKK, I'll explain it simply so that yeah. it's easy to understand. <laughs> Basically, MPKK is a council, okay, a team of kids who are fighting for other kids' rights, children's rights. Um, we gather, we talk, we try to find problems that are affecting children and we're trying to find solutions for them. So we're kids mm -hmm. fighting for other kids. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. So what you guys have done for this year and for the last year, because yeah, last year I went into your formation team, uh, your formation day, and I was in. You, you still remember that day? Mm, and then, yeah, I, then I know what's the progress of MPKK from that day until today. What what programs yeah. that you have to do? Last year, wow, last year was really, really active. Last year, we collaborated with uh, companies such as DG. We collaborated mm -hmm. with UNICEF. Uh, we had programs with NGOs such as Childline Foundation. Uh, we did activities such as we held a summit in KL. We had we had our conferences. We held we had leadership work leadership programs, and that's only for the national council. Mm -hmm. Each state and MPKK has their own state. Each state had their own activities that they launched by themselves. I didn't ask them to do it; they did it themselves. So that's quite amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. I sort of saw that this generation of MPKK, everyone really wants to fight for the same thing and that's fighting for children's rights and that amazes me all the time mm -hmm. um this year we've planned a lot of activities but as you know in the current situation we are in it's quite hard to do any of them but i have seen some of my members do and spread child rights and talk about it uh join conversations about it online so that's mm -hmm. as much as we can do now we're also planning to have our own meeting using um, an online app, online social media app, so we can meet without having to actually meet. So okay. that's about what we're planning this year. As for okay. what we'll do after this whole pandemic is over, I guess we'll have to wait until it's over, then we can really know. Mm, 
Good. So, can I know what is the current issues of children in Malaysia today? From CKK <laughs> and from your perspective, what you guys are fighting for? Current issues, the biggest issue right now is probably what's happening right now, the lockdown. The lockdown is affecting every single person in Malaysia. And for children, let's focus on children. It's affecting us from the point of education. <laughs> um, suddenly, you can see all these different teachers, all these different schools, all these different students having to do, do e-learning, having to do online classes, having to join and learn how to have classes without actually meeting each other. And it's surprising for everyone because teachers are not used to doing this. Students are not used to doing this. At most university students who do this, they, they, they don't really feel troubled by it. But students like Skola Renda students and Skola Benenga students, it's a culture shock for us. Mm. And I believe like, this, is sort of, this is sort of testing how modern Malaysia has become and how capable our education system is in dealing with situations like this and adapting to them. It, it just shows that. Because uh -huh. online learning isn't something that's new. It's been around for a while now. It's just that we're not used to it. Uh -huh. So, uh, 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 other than the online uh, class issue, what are the other issues uh, impacting children in Malaysia today? Uh, other than online class, if we're still on the topic of lockdown, teenagers, uh -huh. children, we're all people who like to go out a lot. We like to go out. We like to talk with people. One big issue is that our social life is going completely down to the ground. We are, we're not able to meet our friends. We're not able to go out. I always see people post on their status or on their story uh, talking about how they miss their friends and then how they miss meeting up. Some, some, some of them are even missing going to school just because they want that social interaction. And some people might see it as like not important, but as a teenager, your social life and talking with each other is one of the biggest parts and aspects of your life. It's mm -hmm. really important that us as teenagers just go out and meet other people. But due to this lockdown, all we can do is go on our phone and the best we can do is like me and you right now, live streaming, talking face to face. This is the best we can do. It can't yeah. replace social mm -hmm. interaction. So mm -hmm. other, than, um, other than not being able to meet each other, what happened is to, uh, teenagers, kids, they start going on social media way more. They start using mm. more YouTube, they start using more uh, Instagram, they start using more TikTok, a lot yes. of, that, that's examples of what teenagers have been doing because what else can we do? We're stuck at home, we can't do anything else. When, yeah. when you move, when you think about it, um, when you're trapped in the house for a long time, even the smallest arguments can turn into big arguments. Mm. Like, if you're mad with your mom or like your mother's mother scolds you or you are fighting with your siblings, usually you can lock yourself in your room or you can go out and talk, uh, tell your friends about it. But you're stuck in the same place with your parents, with your siblings. So all of this starts adding to teenager stress. It's not really severe. It's not really something that really damages a teenager's life, but it's still quite a problem for us because... We're kids. We want to have fun. If we can't have fun, then our childhood is just going to waste like this. Uh -huh. So, um, I saw here one of your friends saying that you are a TikToker. Huh? <laughs> Elvins, maybe, his name. So, uh, what, what is your comment on uh, children getting immersed with social media? And can you advise them? how to manage the social media because I'm going to upload this video in Facebook and YouTube because and this is about children so what is your advice as a leader? Okay, so thank you Elvins for the question. Hi Elvins, he's my classmate. <laughs> we'll, I'll meet you oh, after quarantine. Okay. Um, TikTok, I don't think there's anything wrong with kids <laughs> with kids doing TikTok because like it's a street, it's, 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 it's a platform where you used to express yourself. The only problem comes is when you do videos and you don't know the boundaries. You don't know where to stop. You don't know what you're not supposed to be doing. If you're doing a TikTok for fun and it's just everyone having fun, that's good. But if you're doing, uh, you're doing revealing certain body parts, uh -huh. you're saying certain words, that 
becomes dangerous, especially for the reputation that you might have in the future. You upload this on social media, anyone can save the video, mm. anyone can spread the video. So if you want to do any TikToks or you don't, or you want to join any social medias, upload videos on YouTube, mm. just be careful, especially as a child, because there are people out there who are willing to take advantage of, uh, advantage on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I totally agree with your opinion because nowadays we have threat such as pedophilia. Mm-hmm. You see, and um, now they are taking this advantage to capture as many as pictures of children for their own uh, desire. So we have to uh, be careful on that. So thank you, Elmas, for that for that advice. But um, Elmas, as now we are in lockdown. How mm. are the students are managing their studies? Uh, what about the big exams? What happened to SPM? What happened to UPSR? <laughs> uh, three. Can you explain to us? Because uh, especially me, I don't know what happened to the sec the, to the school system. Actually. Okay. So about I'll just address straight away about the big exams. Um, I don't have the exact schedule here, but for us, the SPM students. Uh-huh. Uh, what happened is our SPM um, uh, SPM is supposedly having phases, right? Phase one and phase two. Well, what happens is that our SPM, the phase one, has been moved uh, further into the year, later into the year. So we don't have any phases anymore. Our SPM is just one full phase. There's no phase one. There's no phase two. There's no resting in between. Mm. The moment we go back oh to school, God. there's gonna be endless studying. And a lot of plans have been cancelled. Like this year, I'm supposed to be having prom, but uh, we we have to move it to another time because SPM has taken up that time. Um, for the school system, like I said just now, a lot of e-learning, and it's kind of hard for teachers. It's hard for teachers because they don't know much about these e-learning methods and these online class methods because they've never had to deal with it. They they only know one thing. They know how to teach in classroom, and that's. It's uh-huh. not their fault that they don't know. It's uh-huh. usually old teachers who don't understand. And uh-huh. there's no way for them to get educated about it now because we can't have courses, we, we can't have courses to teach them. It's really uh-huh. just a way to, to make Malaysians realize that, wow, we, from a modern standpoint, we aren't catching up to all the other countries. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, yeah, SPM has been pushed back. A lot of big exams has been pushed back. It's... Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, from our discussion, we are just talking about what happened this year, right? So yeah. I would like to know what happened last year about children issue. What did you guys have done for last year issues? Oh. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? You like uh, it lagged a bit. Um, can I know uh, last year issues of children last year? What did last you year... guys have done? Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, wait, I have bad memory. Last year, I oh, remember... Before lockdown. Before lockdown, before lockdown uh, it's usually the same issues. May, maybe like viral video coming out here and then. Uh, you have the basic issues such as vaping, students going bullying, motorcycling. Um, issues such as students not knowing about sexual education. Those were a lot of the issues we talked about. But um, last year, there wasn't much of any issues that made as big an impact as right now, as the lockdown. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's all the basic issues. And Mm -hmm. you you can ask me about any of the issues you're thinking about, like the the basic main ones, like students dealing with bullying, because we've talked about that a lot. Mm Because in, in my time, our issues is uh, the caning issues. Do you know uh, the caning issues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we fight for abolishing the caning, the caning issue. Mm. And then about the violence, the student violence in, in home during our time. But for your time, I don't know what is the big issue. <laughs> Now, um, you, you said about the sexual education, is it? So, what is the progress of that uh, education in our school system? Is it going to be implemented in the future or uh, is it still in a big debate on how to implement the education? 
now that I, it's hard to answer that because supposedly I'm part, I'm also part of uh, a council that talks with the higher ups about topics like this. Supposedly we were supposed to have a meeting and finally finish discussing this, but that was also postponed. So when oh. it comes to answering questions like that, I can't yet because I, I well, understandably, um, but I heard the caning just now and that's also quite an issue because uh -huh. I think for parents, some parents, either they are too strict with the children or they're too lovey-dovey. They manja the child too much. It's really yeah. hard to find, it's really hard to find the line between uh, abusing a child and just punishing them physically. Because yeah. Yeah, as, a, as a child, I think we all remember kenarotan, that's a normal thing. <laughs> But when it comes to a physical abuse, uh, that's where the problem starts. Mm -hmm. So, um, since you become president, have you been into meeting with the minister? Yeah, I've met quite some big names. I've met wow. with ministers of uh, other countries, actually. When I went to Thailand oh. last year, mm -hmm. I met with ministers from the Asian countries. I've met the presidents of their uh, representative council. They have their own child representative council with my, um, with my night president, my vice president, Chloe. I don't think she's watching this. Hi, Chloe. I don't think she's watching okay. this. <laughs> so uh, what do you guys uh, discuss there in Thailand? Can you share well, your experience to us? When we went to Thailand, it was to celebrate the making and the anniversary of a book for CRC. CRC, oh. which is the Conventions on the Rights of a Child. What, what us, the kids, did, because what the adults did, um, they were in another room, us kids were in another room. We, uh, all these representatives of children from different countries came together and we talked about the issues affecting our country personally. We talked about what the, is the big issues of our countries were, and what overall we want the people, the adults there, because everyone in that room were higher, were mm -hmm. quite high in rankings. Mm -hmm. What we did was we gathered the issues, we made our presentation, we went up on stage, and then we told mm -hmm. them, as children, what we need and what we're feeling and what we want them to please do for us. And that's mm -hmm. basically a lot of what MPKK has been doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, before our live session, I have sneaked uh, have looked into your MPKKs uh, in respective states. Uh, for example, MPKK Putrajaya, Penang. Uh, I am MPKK Putrajaya. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I saw a lot of programs that you guys have done. Can you mm. um, uh, please name a program that has a re really big impact that, that MPKK have done for the past uh, few days before the lockdown or maybe last year? Um. If we're talking about each state's individual program, that is most that, that can be better explained by the president of that respective state because they're the one who launched it. But I can talk about the national programs. Ah, the national. We had a program at the we had a program called SDG Summit, and this is where we first really teamed up with UNICEF. So what happened mm. was MPKK and a bunch of other children representatives teamed up. We held a summit at. KL, uh, mm -hmm. KL. I remember. I think I remember messaging you about it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you remember. You had a program yes. there as well, right? What, what yes, program I, was that exactly? I have a symposium. Ah, I see. I see. Humanitarian affairs in uh, in uh, Shah Alam, maybe, but I reside in KL. Ah, yeah. So yeah. Um, basically, in, we were in KL, and uh, the funny thing was. On that day, the day where we were, I think the day before we started the summit, there was a whole conference where uh, in, in another room, Tun M was there, a lot of higher ranking officials were there. So a lot of people came and all the people that came there also came to our summit. So we had, mm -hmm. to, we, we had to use a bigger room. The room that we got originally was quite small. And then suddenly we got this huge stadium so a summary mm -hmm. of what happened in the summit was we held, we have we had our boots, we had our own mm -hmm. boots, and then we had mm -hmm. everyone stationed at the boots, and we talked about um, different uh, survival development goals. I mean, 
Sustainable <laughs> Development Goals, SDG. Sustainable yeah. Development Goals. There were four of them. We talked about them, and I was the MC with another representative, uh, child representative. Her name is QQ. Hopefully, she's watching this. Hi, QQ. The summit was, in a nutshell, just a way for children to say, hey, these are the problems we're facing. Please hear our voice, and please consider what we're saying. And that, that was big for me, because we started getting close with UNICEF. We started mm -hmm. getting publicity. Lisa Surihani was there. Ismail Lizani was oh. there. Harit Iskandar was there. It was big. Oh. It was a big event. So, Elmas, um, during the election, uh, when the formation of uh, MPKK cabinet last year, uh, you have um, posted certain manifestos. Can we know what is the manifesto that you have uh, successfully done uh, in, in in today's MPKK term. Uh, uh, could you could you rephrase that? <laughs> in the, uh, you see, I remember uh, during uh, we, to, uh, when we are choosing who are uh, becoming the president, uh, you have a uh, campaign and you have uh, 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 show your talent. So, uh, what have you done to that manifesto as far uh, as uh, happened today? I remember that I promised that we would have, we would follow a certain slogan and we would follow a certain VCMC, which was when our, our slogan was fight for the future. And we're using that a lot. We, we're using that a lot. So that's implemented. Yeah. And another, another policy that I implemented that until this day, I think every member of MPKK does is we dream of a vision where children can walk hand in hand towards a better future, which basically means with whatever we do and whatever we're going towards, we want to make sure that every child has the same rights and every child is able to move forward as well. We've made our own logo. We have a vision. We have a mission. Each state has amazing members who are able to carry out their own activities. And um, I think overall, uh, from the feedback that I've heard from my other members, the inspiration that came from everyone's motivation and everyone's effort is uh, resounding throughout all members. So if you ask any member of MPKK what they're fighting for, they, they know what they're fighting for. If you ask any member of MPKK um, what the slogan is, they know what the slogan is. Because mm -hmm. every member knows that we want to fight for the future. So mm -hmm. my, my, my many there was I say I promise I, I, I don't know if I can be as good a leader but I promise that everyone here will be fighting for the same thing and moving forward together that's exactly what we're doing we're fighting together we're moving forward together hand in hand fight for the future <laughs> so good so you see uh, let us look at the comments um, okay now uh, we move to the section of uh, question and answer so if you guys have question to ask to Elmas, so you guys can ask him anything. If you guys don't have any question, I would like to ask him another question. So now I give you guys, the viewers, the, this opportunity to ask the question to <laughs> our leader. <laughs> Is it your friend, <laughs> Alden Kerr? Yeah, it's my friend. Uh, don't just ignore him. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Hi, Elden. But, uh, um, ah, Mizaf. Yeah. Okay. Feel free. Feel Mizaf free to ask. That's an yeah, MPKK member. MPKK Sabah, yeah. if I'm correct. Oh, I remember our Mizaf. We also have Mizaf during Really? Uh, yes. Her name is also Mizaf. And she is quite, uh, cheerful. Uh, uh, I miss her. Okay, ah, I would like to ask you about the bonding in MPKK. How was the bonding? Uh, Is it good? Yeah. At first, it was kind of hard to bond because like um, everyone didn't know what they were doing there. Everyone just was kind of distant from each other. And during the meeting, uh, during the meeting, we had the persidangan before that. You were there at the persidangan before that, right? We had that, but we had never really met, like, mm -hmm. we've never really formed bonds yet. But throughout the year, through all these activities, through different um, 
through different programs and things, I've gotten really close with my national council. And I feel like they started off as members of my team, but now they're my genuine friends. I can talk to them. I can call mm. them. I can see their status and reply it in a joking manner. And we have our own, we have groups for MPKK Malaysia and MPKK Kebangsaan. So in MPKK Kebangsaan, everyone in that group, I, I, I think we're close friends. We're, uh, we're friends in where we can not only talk to each other in a friendly way, but we can argue, we can debate with each other. But at the end of the day, we can still be friends. And MPKK Malaysia is a group where it includes all MPKK, Malaysia, uh, all MPKK members in Malaysia. And everyone there seems quite friendly too. They like to chat a lot. It's quite noisy, the group. And I like that. It's nice to see everyone interacting with each other. Cool. So, uh, how many members in MPKK Malaysia now, Liz? Okay. So, in MPKK Malaysia, for members... Um, Okay, I'm bad with numbers. Let me remember. <laughs> uh, it's hard to calculate completely because we've added members recently. I mean, not recently. We've added a few members. Like MPKK Labuan went from eight members to 20-something members. Oh, wow. Because, yeah, because in MPKK Labuan, we thought, like, how are we supposed to do activities with only eight members? Because we want to do activities by ourselves. Other than he helping JKM do activities, other than joining other activities, we want to make our own activities. So we added members. If I had to guess how many members we have now, um, maybe around 500? 500? Wow, that's a lot. Wow. Yeah, uh, About 500? Should, should, should be 400. 400. Oh. Oh, so how did you guys select the members into MPKK? Uh, before I came around, I asked how they selected the members. They said that they selected the members by, um, first, they will ask each school to send a representative. And then JKM will check if that representative is okay as a candidate. And then yeah. if that's okay as a candidate, uh, each, each state actually has different ways. Like for Negeri Sembilan, okay. they had three interviews they had to go through. So after they pass this interview, they have to go to the next interview and then the next interview. But for yeah. Labuan, uh, what happened was that if JKM said you were a candidate, you automatically just became a member because we don't have <laughs> that many candidates. Labuan doesn't have that many people. Um, mm -hmm. For other states, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's the same. You have to get the approval of your school and then you have to get the approval mm -hmm. of JKM. Mm, I see. Because during my time, um, my school sent my name to JKM and mm. then I was selected to be the state committee and eventually I become the president. Wow! Exactly. Okay. That's committed exactly. here. <laughs> yes, MPK Sabah have 56 members. Wow! Yeah, By quite a lot, school. right? <laughs> yeah, quite a lot. Yeah. During my time, uh, every state, maybe the most is 20. Huh. Well, we yeah, have a lot of members now. Yeah. Quite a lot. Okay, uh, Elmas, did you guys plan to go overseas together? Overseas together? Um, usually going overseas is dependent on what programs we have there because I, it's hard for me as the president, even as the president, it's hard for me to say, all right, I think I want to have a program overseas. It's, <laughs> it's hard to do something like that. I only went to Thailand because the UNICEF invited us. Uh -huh. If possible... I want to make it so even the persidangan, which we were supposed to have, where it's all our members meeting together in mm -hmm. Selangor, supposedly, so they can enjoy traveling a bit. Even programs like that are quite hard to do. So the plans of going over tea as much as I want it, and I do hope that I can bring my entire national council to do a program there. Maybe we could go to the US. I don't know. Wow. If we could do something like that, I'd like it. But the probability of it isn't... High. I, I can only say yeah. that it's not high the probability. Mm. Uh, for your information, during our time, uh, we the national MPKK went the MPKK to Japan. Concert. Yeah, we went to Japan. You know that? I, I remember, yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but we went under Genesis, uh, under Japan and Malaysia uh, yeah. government. 
So we are fully sponsored by them. So we are lucky lah. <laughs> I hope this But, Genesis also this yeah. year. Yeah, insyaAllah. <laughs> But to be frank to you, I miss MPKK very much. I miss the 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 surrounding, the environment of MPKK, the joy in MPKK and the people in MPKK because I think uh, during my secondary school and during my form 4 and form 5 time is the best time in my life because you know uh, this precious moment will not come come back again in the future so Elmas uh, can I can you give uh, an advice special for MPKK uh, and to the children in Malaysia as president of uh, national uh, children council Okay, so I'll address my members first. Hi, MPKK members, if you're watching this. Um, it's me, Elmas. Um, uh, to explain how I feel, when I heard that the persidangan ditangguhkan, my heart was broken for two reasons. One, I really wanted to hear all your opinions. And two, I just wanted to meet my friends again. Um, my advice for you guys is that No matter where you, no matter where you guys are, no matter what you're doing, no matter if you're stuck at home and you can't use social media or anything, um, just remember that everyone's fighting in their own way. Everyone's fighting in their own place. And if we all fight together, hand in hand, we'll be able to fight for the future. I, tr I believe that. And for children in Malaysia, which is basically all the viewers here, all my mm -hmm. friends, basically, hi. Uh, stay at home. I know it's boring. I know you guys are lonely. I know I'm lonely too, doing the same thing every day. But stay at home, please. Because I really hope that I can meet you all when you're safe and sound again. After quarantine. Okay, wait. Uh, why am Farisam, Farisa Amzar? Wait, huh? She that's... Posts a question. That's, oh, that's a meme. Okay, okay. Farisa yeah. Amzar, okay. Ingat perempuan ni. Okay. So, you know Hari Harun, Abang M. Um, I think I know Hari Harun. Uh, pernah jumpa lah Hari Harun tu. And I noticed his name before. But I couldn't remember much lah because uh, it has been six years. Okay. So, that's I couldn't the, remember. Uh, that's really, the... Hari Harun, but... Yeah. That's the setia usaha of MPKK KL. MPKK... Yeah. Oh. The setia... Hi Faris. Oh really? Oh. YM eh? Yang mulia Faris Amza eh? Hmm. Very, <laughs> very high ranking. <laughs> Good so, guy. So if you guys have any question to ask to Elmas, we have uh, about 12 viewers right now. So okay, what is your hope for MPKK in the future? I hope that one thing that I said that I promised everyone was that uh, I hope that we can be, this generation of MPKK can be the generation that brings MPKK up, that makes MPKK known. Because a lot of our work was making MPKK something that the Malaysia knew, because a lot of Malaysians don't know about it, right? Yes. Uh, but it seems to be getting hard to do that when most of, Half the year is already taken away from us. Mm -hmm. I think for my hopes and my wishes for my council, I hope one, that everyone stays safe. And two, that no matter how little time we have and no matter how little activities we do, we'll be able to make an impact. Because that's all we want to do. We want to make an impact and we want to help children. That's, uh, that's our whole point. Okay. Uh... Elmas right now is 9.55 p.m. already. Okay. Oh, wow. So, I uh, would like to say thank you, Elmas, for joining me in this live session. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for having And, me. Yeah. Uh, welcome, because I am glad to have you in our session. So, uh, after this, can we have another chit-chat session at uh, internet uh, meeting or internet uh, live session? Sure. I don't have anything else to do. I'm just at home. Yeah. <laughs> so we can discuss uh, a lot of issues regarding children. Mm -hmm. But for today, 
I just want to know and we all want to know what is MPKK mm-hmm. and what have uh, MPKK done in order to uphold the rights of children in Malaysia and in the world maybe. Mm-hmm. So thank you Elmer for joining us and thank you everyone from MPKK for joining our live session tonight. Um, please uh, send my regards to every member of MPKK. Say Abang M kirim salam dekat semua ya. Yeah? Uh, if they remember my M lah. Uh, I hope you guys will invite me to your uh, events. I want to go and I want to experience again uh, MPKK events and I would like to uh, to apa, menghargai balik uh, memori-memori yang lama. Okay, so thank you Elmas for joining joining uh, me and don't worry Shamira, I will save this live and I will post back in my Instagram, in my YouTube and my Facebook. Okay? Okay. Okay, Elmas, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye, Elmas. See you. Bye-bye. Elmas, President for the National uh, Rep- uh, Children Representative Council of Malaysia or in uh, Malay, MPKK, Majlis Perwakilan Kanak-Kanak. And I am wearing uh, MPKK shirt. Uh, this shirt has been six years uh, already. Uh, I miss MPKK very much. I miss the people there. And you know, MPKK is is the place where I learn to make friends and to have real friends, you know, MPKK. So you guys in MPKK, you should take care of that friendship and you guys have to preserve what you have. So thank you for joining our live session tonight. Don't forget to follow me. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube, uh, ZP1AI. I repeat again, ZP1AI. Uh, you, you can search on YouTube and you can find a lot of my live session there. And I will upload this live session and uh, I will also upload this live session uh, in Facebook. So thank you for joining again. I'm sorry for any uh, wrongness or, or speaking, uh, you know, I have no idea what to speak because I was, I was missing a PK today. So thank you and please uh, continue uh, following my live IG and I hope we will meet again in the future and please take care of yourself, do what you need to do and uh, thank you Abang M, thank you Abang M, welcome. So take care and I pray for Allah to take care of all of you and to take care of all of your families and to take care of you Malaysia. Okay, sekian. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, goodbye, take care, and jaga diri. Bye-bye.